Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be checking out the first look at the PlayStation 5 user experience. Now I wasn't really too sure if I wanted to check this out or not. I didn't want to spoil myself when I do get my hands on the on the console and that's damn hard at the moment. The things just sold out everywhere. I wanted to be surprised and just kind of like turn it on for the first time and dive into it. But I'm weak and I couldn't help it and I've not been very well so I've had a few, a few days off work so I'm feeling pretty husky, pretty coffee, but I feel okay to kind of record this reaction, although I might cough all the way through it, but I'm going to edit that out. But yeah, my voice is a little bit rough, so please forgive me. But like I said, I'm weak and I wanted to check this thing out. So without further ado, let's just dive in and have a look at the PlayStation 5 user experience. Three, two, one, go. Spoil me. No, don't, don't spoil too much. Okay. Okay. I'm excited for this thing. I'm wow, Hideaki super loud. Shino. And I head up PlayStation's platform planning and management team, which includes product and UX design. Today, we are finally going to give you a look at the PlayStation 5 user experience. We will see some of the features that enable games to work together with the hardware and network to deliver a truly next generation experience. Okay. Our vision for a PS5 user experience is simple. We believe that your playtime is valuable and should be meaningful. Yes. Yes. PlayStation team members from all around the world work to deliver a PS5 experience that is completely centered on you, the player, connecting you with a great play and a passionate community of gamers. Okay, here we go. With a look and feel that's designed for 4K TVs, the PS5 user experience was built from the ground up to take advantage of the console capabilities, complementing the transformative games coming with this new generation. It's going to look I amazing. Note that this video tour is from a pre-production environment on the PS5 console, so there may be a few small wrinkles or minor changes once the console launches in November. Okay. And now, let's check it out, courtesy of our own Sid Schumann. I honestly don't think I'm going to get my hands on one until Thanks, 2021 Welcome at this point. Welcome to your new PlayStation 5 console experience. Scotty this time, Kenzo. we started up from rest mode. We've already created an account and signed into PlayStation Network. So let's cool. log in. Okay. In this case, I've resumed S same, right same, but different. Sackboy, a big adventure, and here we're looking at PlayStation 5's control. Well, the options set. are on the From bottom here, of the screen. Click, and we're right back into the game. But let's take a moment and look around. The control center is always one tap of the PlayStation button away. It provides immediate access to almost everything you need from the system without leaving the game. This includes things like seeing who is online, checking oh, the brings up. the download, managing your controller, power, and more. Brings up like an, an overlay menu. These colorful characters are called cards, and they let you interact with games and the system in a variety of ways. First, as we've just resumed, the Control Center is showing a special card that allows me to get up to date on recent stories posted by publishers for games I am following. Cool. Another card here shows me recent media I've captured from my gameplay using the Create button oh, cool. on the DualSense nice. controller. Let's check out one of the most powerful new features of the PS5 console. They're actually just to the right in this row, and we call them Activities. Activities are part of the plan to remove barriers to gameplay. Let's get an example of one way they're used in Sackboy, a big adventure. Sackboy. With a tap of the PlayStation button, I'm back Actually, to Actually, looks really good. Sackboy, a big adventure, is packed with things to discover, and each level represents one type of activity I can play, many of which I can go back to later to discover more. I tap the PlayStation button to bring up the control center again. I can see a number of available activities, both active and suggested. Oh, buttons. okay. Let's take this first one, a big adventure, as an example. I can see that I haven't quite completed this level yet. I'm at 33%. Let's open About up 10 minutes scene. left. Here I it tells you how long you are, unless you really suck at it. Key objectives I haven't met. And I'm seeing a very important piece of information here. Oh, my list is going to be long. Minutes left. This is PlayStation 5's personalized playtime estimate, giving me an idea how long it will take me to complete this activity. Based on your your gameplay history, Some who knows what you're, even let you what you you're like? Directly to that place in the game. Cool. But there's more to see here. For you can jump example, straight to your quest. Let's open that activity back up. 
level, a big adventure. Can you understand me okay? Oh my god. To find the monk robes costume piece. Looks like I need a little help. Some in-game activities, like this one, offer official game help. Game help is included as a benefit for active PlayStation Plus members in some PS5 games. In this case, I can open up that objective to get some hints without resorting to a web search or digging through long uh -huh. videos or articles that might contain spoilers. Well, that's handy. I'm using that shit all the time. <laughs> and I can play it here in the card, and I can hints and trips, to get a trips, tricks without leaving the game. Sometimes trip a lot. it's really useful to be able to see the hint on screen while you play. Some cards can be put in a picture in picture mode. This is an amazing idea. A side by side view. Super cool. And if you pin it, I'll try not to use it though. Access it via the control center at any time. Now let's go find those rascally monk robes. I'm playing Witcher 3 at the moment, and sometimes I've got a Google search or do a YouTube search on how to beat a certain monster. Because it's hard. PlayStation wanted to make it really easy to chat with your friends on the PlayStation 5 console. But you got to pause the game, look at your phone, go back. So this is Here's this is good. It's all integrated. An notification with a tap of the PlayStation button, and I've decided to join the voice chat that my friend just entered. Now my friend could have done this on the PlayStation app for mobile devices, from a PS4, or in this case, from a PS5. The DualSense controller features an integrated microphone too, so I could start talking right away. But I always have the ability to hit the mute button on the controller or in the menus. Mute your friends. Parties take on an expanded role with PS5, and they now provide persistent spaces to connect with groups that you play with. Here I have a couple of friends chatting away in the party. One of them has started sharing their screen with the group. Okay, screen share. Looks like they're playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy. We can chat while we play, and I can watch his progress as well. I've not played that yet. I should really dive into it. This is another card I think I have it somewhere. Picture in picture mode, or pinned to the side while you play. You can access but how, how? the control center too, but let's dismiss it for now. I'd get so distracted watching somebody okay, else play rather than concentrate so on my far, own game. But good idea though. On PS5 will make it easier and faster to hop back into PS5 games and how you can get in-game help and chat with your friends. So that leaves online multiplayer gaming. Let's check it out. This game looks really cute. I see that some of my friends are online, so it's time to say goodbye to Sackboy for now and spin up a match of Destruction All-Stars. The title though. My party has already started a match. And we can join them from this card in Control Center. Destruction All Stars. Destruction All Stars now quickly starts thanks to PS5's ultra high speed SSD. Okay, I think we've got enough people on our party, so let's jump in. It's gonna be in. so quick. We're keeping the focus on PS5's user experience today, so let's zip ahead so we can see more. And just like that, we're in. We don't have time to play a full match today, but I do think we have time to take a quick photo. To do that, I'll just tap the <laughs> Create button on the DualSense controller. PS5 is always capturing recent game. Time. Oh, nice. Nice and shot, easy. Even using in-game photo mode, you can capture a high-quality screenshot here. This optimizes capturing the moment, letting you review and choose to share later on. I should mention... Screenshots and video can be captured at up to 4K on the PS5 console. Okay, so it's far be pretty. we've shown off how to jump into activities, how to chat with your friends, get into groups together to play, capturing gameplay, all of that while in-game. But what if I want to play a different game? Quick load. Welcome to the PlayStation 5 home screen. This is where you'll land when you start up from a powered off state and where you'll go when you want to choose a new game to play or download. The layout right. of the space is designed to present games and game content beautifully on a 4K display with simple yeah. and super fast access to what you need. And in case you're wondering, media related apps will have their own space like this one, but today we're focused on gaming. Each game has its own hub completely integrated, so all you need to do is scroll down to see activities you can jump right into video clips, stories about the game, DLC, and more. 
backward compatible PS4 titles will benefit from some of these features too. Good. Let's move one spot to the left and check out Explore, which brings together all your games. We saw a view of this from the control center earlier. It's so kind of like the library. will also be in the new PlayStation app for mobile devices. Explore keeps you in the loop with official stories from PlayStation and from all the games you're following, including trending media from the community. We'll be testing and learning about this feature in the U.S. at launch, so not everyone will have this on day one. But it gives you a good idea of the direction. And I'm liking the design. I mean, the, store for PS5. the layout of the it's display is really good. Integrated into the system. It's not a standalone app anymore. Browsing for new games to play will be easier thanks to the speed of PS5 and a more personalized store experience. And here, you'll be able to browse the latest games and deals. You'll find PS5 games and many backward compatible PS4 games too. I'm sad to say, but we are almost out of time. So let's oh, pull up Control Center one more time with a tap of the PlayStation uh. button. On our way out, why don't we quickly share that photo we took in Destruction All-Stars? We can find recently captured media in this handy card in Control Center. From I like there, it, it's so... Do some quick edits, but I think I'm ready to so share So accessible. It right On PlayStation 5, I have the option to share videos and images to supported external services, or I can send them directly to one of my parties. Remember, parties are bigger than just voice chat now. So I'll select one of my favorite parties here. Let's attach a quick message here. The DualSense controller makes this really easy. PlayStation 5 supports voice dictation in a number of languages, so you no longer oh. have to type messages with the keyboard if you don't want to. Simply select the microphone button. Typing on a console is so painful. My friend hasn't yet played the activity where I captured this media, and the game's developer thinks that activity might contain spoilers, they'll receive a warning before they view it. Well, that's it for our demo. There are many more exciting features we couldn't get to today, but we're super excited to share more of the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation app user experience with you in the coming weeks headed to launch. And of course, this was just the first look at what fans could expect on day one. The team at PlayStation is committed to evolving this experience with our community in the months ahead. We nice. look forward to sharing more. Thanks for watching. Ah, oh, you're welcome. PlayStation. PlayStation. Okay, what I liked about it was it's kind of like uh, different but familiar. And what I really liked about it was that you don't really go to another menu screen. Like you hit your desired option and it just comes up in a card on the main display. Like just when it was closing down the PlayStation then, like going to rest mode, it just popped up on the display. So it doesn't really kind of take you away from the main, the main screen. It, it just presents all there nicely and beautiful. And like you said, it's going to look pretty good on those who have the big 4K TVs like myself. I've got a big 67-inch beast. It's going to look sensational. So, yeah, I have now spoiled myself for how the, the hub's going to look and, and the main screens. But that's fine. It's going to look very similar to what we've been using. I've had the PS4 since launch day, and uh, I've just loved it. It's been a beast of a machine, and it works wonderfully. It's still going strong, and the games on it are still getting released today still look amazing. But the PS5 is just going to be so amazing with the SSD. It's going to be so quick and intuitive and fast and and beautiful. I mean, all those 4K images are just going to be sensational. So I'm really excited to dive into this thing. And like I said, it's just sold out everywhere. I keep refreshing Amazon every day. I've set up notifications. I'm just waiting to be notified that I can pre-order this thing. But I think getting it before Christmas could be could be a stretch. But we shall see. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.